Adler. Adler, yeah. Where are you from originally? Um, born in New York, raised in Israel. But you, what's your name? My name is Gilad Mezamer. M E Z A M E R. And what's your hometown? My hometown is uh, Tivon and uh, Shimshit, two small villages up north of Israel. How did you gentlemen happen to meet? Uh, well, uh, I, when I was in the military service, uh, I got stabbed in the head and uh, was badly wounded. My main artery in the neck was cut in half. And uh, Aaron here was uh, in my rescue. He was a very important part of my rescuing. Just so I understand, were you in military uniform? Yes, I was in, my, uh, in the middle of my service. And did you get stabbed by another soldier? No, I got stabbed by a terrorist. From where? I think he was from Hebron. So technically he's a Palestinian terrorist? Yeah, a Palestinian terrorist, yes. And how did he uh, surprise you? He surprised me from the side. He, just, he had a newspaper in his hand and he uh, took a knife out of it. and just uh, started running, running after me, trying to stab me. And eventually he got to me and stabbed me in the head. And the knife got, got from my head all the way here inside. Yes. Uh, Turn to the camera. Uh, yeah. This is uh, from the operation. Once I got to the hospital, they opened my neck and saw my artery cut in half. And carotid artery? Carotid, yeah. Which artery? yeah. The carotid artery. Carotid, yeah. yeah. So when you encountered this, what was your reaction? So my, my part uh, starts a little later. Gilad was attacked, fought, what he didn't say is that he fought back and actually shot the terrorist who stabbed him um, and, uh, and was critically wounded. And he was in Hebron, which is an hour away from Jerusalem, basically an hour away from the closest hospital. And as you mentioned, it was his carotid artery, which is the main artery in the neck. It's an artery that uh, transports a lot of blood very fast. And, Bleeding from that artery is very hard to control, and usually, usually it's fatal. So the ambulance that was on site started transporting Gilad towards Jerusalem, towards the hospital. And I was actually um, off duty. I, I, I'm a lawyer when I'm off duty as a paramedic, and uh, it's funny to put it that way. And I was at a, in a, at a meeting in the Israeli Tax Authority, and I heard of the call. And because of uh, past experience with other calls, we, we sort of develop. Uh, a mechanism to transport blood to the field. And it was never tested before, but I just got on my Metacycle, which is a, a motorcycle given by Magenda Vida Dome for first response. It's given to paramedics. It has light sirens and life-saving equipment. I got on my motorcycle, drove to the hospital, and um, received blood from the, from the blood bank at the hospital, and then drove out to the field and met the ambulance halfway. and just left my motorcycle there and jumped on. And over there, I saw Gilad for the first time, who was in, like I said, in critical condition. And uh, we continued our journey to the hospital, administering blood, which kept him, basically gave him a bridge of life, an extra 10 minutes of, uh, of time to, until we got to the hospital. And that's how they were able to get him there alive and take him into surgery. And thank God he's uh, here today, standing. Yeah. How long ago did this happen? When did this happen? Uh, oh, uh, almost exactly two years. It was actually two years and four days ago. On Thursday, it was two years. Yeah. Thursday will be, uh, was? Thursday, it was two years, yeah. That's incredible. So, Hebron is surrounded by Arab villages, isn't that right? That's true. So, there's uh, an Arab version of uh, the Red Cross also. Would they come and help you? Uh, no, I don't think so, no. It's, um, it usually isn't, uh, it's not an issue because the Israeli ambulances or the military ambulances respond in a very timely manner. Magen David Adom is spread out all over the place. So we're there, we're there fast enough for it to not even be an issue. I don't know, I don't know to tell you if they would in theory or not. I can't speak for them, but we, we haven't needed their services. Uh, what's special about Hebron that there's a, a significant Jewish presence there? Uh, according to the Bible, Hebron was uh, bought uh, by Abraham, by our forefathers, and uh, has had a Jewish presence pretty much continuously ever since. And uh, it is, it's a city that's important in Jewish heritage and Jewish history. Who's buried there? Who's buried? Our three fathers and three of our mothers. So that's why it's important that Jews live there to worship, but also they need to have a, a, an IDF presence, soldiers, to protect them. An IDF presence is necessary because uh, tensions were always high in Hebron. 
Ever since the liberation in 67, it's been a source of controversy, and the IDF is there to protect, uh, protect people coming to pray. So, how do you feel coming here tonight? I'm very honored to be here tonight. It's very exciting. Everybody's so happy to be here as well, and I uh, hope we have a great evening. And raise money for a good cause, for saving lives. Very important, as you can see. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you feel a debt of gratitude to um, again Davida Dome? Of course, of course. Without them, I wouldn't be here, standing on my two feet and uh, talking to you and being here. It's very exciting. What have you gone on to do with your life now? Right now, I'm uh, saving money to uh, travel. Uh, I'm actually planning on doing a cross-country trip uh, through the USA with two other good friends, and uh, yeah, just living my life.